I'll call the meeting to get to order of the Joint Planning Commission and Common Council. And we'll have Lana call the roll for a plan commission. We don't usually do that, so. Kirchma. Here. Barman. Here. Hannah. Here. Engelberger. Here. Bartlett. Here. Truel. Here. And Olson. Here. They're all present. I forgot to say here. <laughs> and uh, call the roll for the Common Council meeting. Bartlett. Here. Hirsch. Here. Kittleson. Here. Swadley. Here. Orsma. Here. Reeves. Here. Majeski. Excused. Okay. Um, Engelberger. Here. Jensen. Here. Truel. Still here. O'Connor. <laughs> here. Good to know you didn't slip out and in between. Here. Um, <coughs> and Johnson is excused. That's an excuse. There are 10 alders here tonight. Absolutely. Next on our agenda is verification of the proper le legal notice. Clerk Krupp. I do have the legal notice here of the public hearing was sent to the hub on May 19th and published on May 25th. Thank you very much. Um, we'll do things a little bit differently than we're used to once we get down to the public hearing, but we'll start tonight with a presentation of the proposed amended comprehensive plan by our consultant, um, Jackie. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. How's the volume here? Great. Hello everyone, my name is Jackie Mish. I'm a planning consultant for Vanderwall & Associates. I'm here with Mike Slavney, a principal in our firm. I'm here to outline a little bit about the comprehensive plan update. I know that many plan commissioners and city council people are familiar with the plan, so I won't spend too much time, but I would like to just provide a brief overview of what the plan is and some of the changes that we'll see in that plan. So. Just as a reminder, the comprehensive plan is a plan for growth for the entire city of Stoughton. Um, it helps define the desired type and location and appearance of future development. And by having a comprehensive plan, we help preserve and enhance quality of life, residential neighborhoods, and property values. Having a comprehensive plan helps link future transportation and utility project decisions with land use decisions. So it helps, helps the city grow in a logical and efficient manner. Um, helps promote efficient development and and also serves as a guide to your local officials um, for priorities in the next 20 years or so. So um, pretty much every community in Wisconsin has a comprehensive plan. In fact, it's required by state statutes. Um, state smart growth legislation was enacted in 1999 and that plan is required to be updated every 10 years and that's what this process is, is Stoughton updating its um, undertaking its 10-year update of its existing comprehensive plan. So as you may know, there are nine required elements of a comprehensive plan, and the draft plan touches on all of these. Those include background information, um, including issues and opportunities, touches on agriculture, agricultural, natural, and cultural resources, land use, transportation, utilities and community facilities, housing, economic development, intergovernmental cooperation, and implementation. So the draft plan includes chapters on each one of these topics. The city was firmly committed to stakeholder involvement throughout the planning process. So as you know, there's been, um, the city's been hosting the plan document, maps, and other materials on the city website throughout the process. The city adopted a public participation plan early in the process to establish the, the stakeholder involvement opportunities. The city mailed a community survey postcard to every household in the city, um, and that survey was taken online, and we had about a 10% response rate for that survey, which was really good. We held a commu community visioning workshop, uh, at least four meetings with the plan commission to refine our policy direction, two draft plan review open houses, and then tonight, our state statute required public hearing. So I wanted to introduce the concept of the future land use map to all of you. Um, I think that in this plan in particular, most of the substantive changes to, to this plan over your existing plan are to that future land use map. And it's a core piece of the, of the comprehensive plan. So the future land use map shows desired future land use patterns for the area within the city's current uh, limits, as well as its uh, 1.5 mile extraterritorial jurisdiction. And that's roughly based on growth projections for the city. Um, in this case, Stoughton shows more than 20 or 25 years worth of growth on their future land use map. This, uh, the map enables the city to direct 
um, development areas that can be more efficiently served by utilities, existing infrastructure, et cetera. It prevents leapfrog of, um, development and helps promote smart growth. And the future land use categories or the colors on the map correspond with different future, um, with different city zoning districts. And per state law, um, changes to zoning need to be consistent with the city's adopted future land use plan. So there are a number of changes to the future land use map since um, the city last adopted their comprehensive plan. So I wanted to just run those, through, run you all through those very briefly. Um, and you'll see that the city's growth area on the west side has been extended, and likewise the growth, the city's planned growth area is extended to the so it's explained, excuse me, extended to the west and the northwest. We have fine-tuned the Kettle Park West future land use pattern simply to reflect the latest approved plan for that area. City helped us tremendously with a number of spot updates throughout the uh, developed part of the city simply to reflect uh, changes in land use that have occurred in the last 10 years that we anticipate continuing to be the case in the future. And then finally we updated a lot of areas outside of the city's planned <coughs> urban development area or the planned growth area just to better match existing uses in those locations. So we published our public hearing draft on May 25th, and by uh, state statutes require us to um, make no changes to that draft so that the public gets a chance to review um, for, for 30 days. And so we've heard from the public and from city staff um, a few, after reviewing the public hearing draft, just a few changes that they'd like to see made for the plan. And so I thought we would review all those because those changes are not reflected in the public hearing draft that all of you have in your packets. So one of, one of the comments was to update and correct Table 6. Table 6 is an uh, inventory of existing land use acreage in the city broken down by land use category. And so what we did was um, the recommendation was to remove land use categories that aren't oriented to development from the, from the total. And so as you can see now in the new table, we have our development oriented categories above the bold total and our rural and uh, surface water categories um, below the total. And so you can see the corrected table here. Another comment was to update the date of the latest Dane County groundwater plan. Um, the, the 1990 plan was updated in 20, 2017 and we wanna update our plan to reflect that update. And then um, all of the maps in the plan will be updated to reflect the latest parcel data. So they'll all have the 2017 parcels um, and that applies to all the maps in the plan. Okay, and so um, this is where I'd wanna turn it over to some markups that staff put together. Um, so this is our future land use map. This is the version that um, you have in your packet stated May 25th. Um, staff has taken another look at a few areas and just made a few refinements in some locations um, and so we'll show you those suggested changes. It's as outlined in this memo. I'm sorry? As outlined in this. Oh correct. yeah, I should say that there's a memo for me in your packet in which we go through all the proposed changes, including the ones I just spoke about. And then there's a table um, that includes all of the proposed changes to the future land use map. It's not displaying. I'm sorry, just one sec. Technical Right, so there we go. All right, so this is um, two two parcels or a number of parcels in the Meadow Drive area um, that have recently rezoned to reflect uh, the development that's going to happen there. So there's a few parcels planned for public open space. Um, I believe 
Is that right where that label is? Yeah, it, maybe if I just run through this, uh, sure. the tw 2000 through 2024 addresses there, um, those were designated and split to allow for single family homes to be constructed on those sites at the end of Stonecrest, or uh, Metal, Metal Drive, sorry. These are enumerated in table form from the, in, in the memo that was provided to you from Vanderwall. Uh, this is just a graphical representation of that. Um, so the fifth one, is, so that's the first four items in the table that were that was provided. Mm -hmm. um, the fifth one is, um, I'm sorry, outlot one of the same map shows the area that's reflected behind these single family homes is for parks and open space. It's part of the uh, dedication area that was dedicated to the city. Sonia, can you just explain where Meadow Drive actually is? Sure, I'm sorry. Meadow Drive is part of uh, Eastwood Estates, a northeast quadrant of County N and 51, um, but behind the Fastenal area okay. on the east side of the city. Okay. Sorry, thank you for um, making me highlight that. Sure. Um, the next one is on Kingsland Road. There was an area that wasn't depicted as a T twin family residence or two family home, you can see this lot was actually split uh, through a zero, zero lot line and should be designated as a two family parcel or parcels on Kingsland Road. 2300 US Highway 51, you can see, is actually in the curve of Highway 51 adjacent to the SWAC building. Uh, this location actually is a stormwater management f basin and therefore should be recognized as public open space in the comp plan. Abel Court. Uh, this is an un undeveloped cul-de-sac off of Lincoln Avenue, um, north of Hamilton Street and south of um, the high school property. This unplatted area um, is, had been shown previously to have single family, uh, two single family lots, two duplex lots, and two multifamily parcels. Uh, the proposal at this point is to have them be proposed all as a multifamily. It's likely they'll become part of one single development as that would be developed in the future. Chalet Court. Um, you'll recall this area is uh, but near Kiganza School. Um, off of Chalet Drive, the undeveloped cul-de-sac has been um, shown as an area that would allow for uh, multi-family development in the city lands. You've, you've seen the proposal that hasn't been solidified at this point, but to uh, possibly swap portions of that area. Um, and I'll show the area that potentially could be swapped if it moves forward. Um, this little portion of the city lands in exchange for um, a major portion of this parcel here. Uh, so the idea is to show this all as a multi-family area in the event that that would ever be uh, consummated as part of a deal. It'll, it still remains a city land area at this point and still acts as our a stormwater management location or confined basin, but this would allow for that to happen if the city desired to in the future. County Highway A, um, this is near Racetrack Road. Racetrack Road runs north-south along uh, this, this corridor. Um, Stoughton Trailers, Plant 6, the large facility is on the south side of County A along here. Um, the property owner here um, would like to have this piece changed from a single family resident potential to have consideration for future land use as multifamily. Um, changing it on this map doesn't uh, dictate that it will be rezoned to multifamily, but it certainly allows for that opportunity if a development proposal comes forward that would would meet the city's um, goals. This particular parcel is approximately 55 acres. Um, the city will recognize this as the larger track of land the city is in, in acquisition process right now, um, adjacent to the land that we purchased for the public works facility. This would, would augment that um, and therefore it's being proposed to be um, made into general industrial or I'm sorry, heavy industrial, um, because there is potential for future composting that would occur as part of a city operation there in the future. Um, this area is a proposed. Me. I'm sorry. Uh, Michael has a question oh, about question, the industrial. Yeah. In the last one, what was yeah. that little piece on the corner up there? 
That little piece on the corner is an existing home. This one here? Yeah. Yeah, there's an existing single family residence that remains there as well as the, across the street. Uh, at this time, the future land use isn't proposed to change for that parcel, um, but, but recognize the, the pieces that the city's in the process of acquiring. Without that corner, though? Without that corner. That's, no, that's not the corner property the city is trying to acquire. Uh, the one the city's in the process of acquiring is up here. Mm -hmm. Yep. I thought there's a lot of that property is wetland. Is that? Mm -hmm. it, it certainly is, and that doesn't change. Um, that doesn't change the inability to develop a par parcel of this. Um, water wetlands encompasses uh, the main section along the interior of this, but the balance of it um, is likely able to be used for composting or or wood storage that the city would maybe have in the future. So when you I, I guess I'm confused of why you wouldn't mark part of it as protective wetland or public open space and only yep. portion out the part that could be industrial. Why would you create the whole parcel as industrial when you wouldn't be able to use it as that? There's still the underlying or overlying um, designation for natural resources. That's a, that's a separate map. And that will still show the undevelopable portions of this property. Okay. This just um, indicates the larger parcel as a whole being industrial in nature, even though much of it couldn't be developed anyhow. Okay, thank you. You're, you're welcome. Good question. Uh, adjacent to Stoughton Trailers on um, Veterans Road or Highway N as it continues south, Dunkirk Avenue comes into this location. Stone Trailers is located in this quadrant. There's a large tract of land that over time we've had inquiries about potential development of that. Um, and we're proposing that that also be um, designated to accommodate um, potentially uh, heavy industrial use in the future if that ever materializes. North Page Street, corner of Roby. Um, a a series of parcels near um, Roby Road runs along this corridor, or I'm sorry, Roby Road runs along here and then Page Street. Uh, this area has a consortium of existing uses. Uh, there's been um, discussion over the years about possibly accommodating that to be um, a mixed use development in that location. I'm sorry, what number is that one on here? Several 25, 25. starts at 25. That's shown as item 25 in the ta table that was provided. 400 North Morris, uh, this graphic doesn't do it justice. <coughs> there was a remnant parcel in this location that's actually owned by Scotland, and therefore it, it really is part of the overall complex here. It certainly isn't a, um, a location that would be anything other than the institutional use that's there. Uh, in the adjacent areas as well. So that would be the proposal for that single parcel. That was item number 29. Um, item number 30 on the table, uh, the Granude Farm. This is Highway 51. The entrance to Eggleson's Woods is off to the, the right here. Um, this doesn't also show up well, but there is one small parcel here that didn't get um, colored on the draft map as being part of a planned mixed use area that surrounds it that was proposed in the draft future land use map. Therefore, we think that should be corrected at this time as well. Stonecrest development. This is um, off of Racetrack Road, south southern part of Racetrack Road in this location. Stonecrest has two areas that need to be corrected on the future land use map. The stormwater management area is, is an open space area managed by the city. And then there's a two family residential parcel in the bottom part of that page that, that also would be corrected as part of this proposal. And then um, Jefferson Street. Uh, this is near the library. The library parking lot is located here. 216, the owner, um, council members will recognize the city actually owns this vacant parcel of land and um, the library has future visions of possibly acquiring this site in the future. Therefore, we propose that both of these sites be identified in future land use as institutional to reflect the anticipated long-term use there. Those are the sites that were identified in the table. All right, thank you. 
So when we do get to the point where the plan commission is ready, ready to make a recommendation and the, and the council is ready to adopt, we would ask that they include those proposed changes that were not included in the public hearing draft. So that oh, concludes sorry. my presentation for the most part. And so Mike and I are here after the public hearing to answer questions from the public and local officials. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Jackie. And this is the part that's a little different that, that uh, we will do tonight is that when I open the public hear hearing, we will have um, folks that have registered to speak do so. And then there's the opportunity for um, additional statements or questions from the public, and then questions from our plan commissioner and alder persons as well. Our consultants are keeping track of all those questions, and then collectively they'll answer all the questions at the end. So rather than a give and take as we go, they'd like to just collect all the questions and then respond to them collectively. So next is an, a, our public hearing. So I'll close our meeting and open a public hearing. We do have several folks registered to speak. Roger Springman, if you'd like to come to the podium, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, of course, I've been up here numerous times over the last uh, six or eight months uh, making comments on the comp plan, so I'm not uh, new to this uh, comment opportunities, but again, I always appreciate the chance to make them and I'm going to do so again tonight. Um, I have made comments before on the park and ride situation. I caught, brought that to your attention in previous comments, both written and oral. I did make comments on the Gateway Center uh, development north of town, wondering what its appropriateness relative to the Linwood property across the street. Why bring them on at the same time? Can't we stage them? That was another comment I made. I'm just going through a couple here, then I'm going to get to my main one. And I also had talked about growth projections and growth rates, as you all may recall from previous conversations. So those are all legitimate topics that I still am concerned about. But my one tonight is one that I think is probably, in my view, probably the most important one of all, because the current comp plan does not properly link school enrollments and school population needs to housing and growth. And I view that as a major limitation and error in this report. I understand that by state statutes, uh, I looked at when uh, Jackie gave her report a little bit ago, there wasn't a section officially called school linkages for the comp plan, but as the city council and as members caring about our community, I hope you can see the wisdom in getting more in depth on the topic of school enrollments and comp plan issues related to housing and growth. Um, our good neighbors, the Capings and uh, Sue and I, put together a page and a half letter this past, actually we did it a couple weeks ago. We sent it out to all the council and all this, the, uh, uh, the school board members and also the leadership of the school district last week. So I, for whatever reason, I forgot to get it to the planning commission members, so I apologize for that. Uh, by uh, reference, we just did what we just thought of at the moment. But anyway, you should have received that page and a half letter. There's two appendices with it. One is a suggested list of uh, maps and tables that could be supplied by the city for linking housing with growth and school enrollments. And then the other one is one that I'm going to talk about momentarily, but it's a report called Planning for Schools of Tomorrow. And I don't know if any of you had a chance to download it from the um, appendix appendices file that we provided to you, but it's a fantastic report that does thoroughly link housing and schools and growth together, in this case for the city of Cedarburg, Wisconsin. So I'll bring that to your attention momentarily. So our concept in bringing this issue to you at this last 12th hour moment is simple. School enrollment issues can only be resolved when city and school district leaders use data and policy analysis with long-term decision-making tools such as the comp plan and district's strategic plan to meet common goals and needs. That has not happened. It has not happened in the school district's uh, strategic plan, and it definitely has not happened in the comp plan. And I think this is, uh, we think I should say, this is a major omission and error. Our thesis is simple, and I'm reading right from the letter, uh, so I just mentioned our concept. Our thesis is as following. Our thesis is, School enrollment fixes don't exist independent of the community around them. Plan for growth and new housing appropriately and school enrollment shortfalls slowly begin to take care of themselves. And as a reference to that, 
in my research over the last several weeks, I happened to run into a classic study out of Maryland. I'll just read the title. I'm not going to read the report, obviously, called Housing Policy is School Policy. And below it, the subtitle is Economically Integrative Housing Promotes Academic Success in Mo Montgomery County, Maryland. And this was done by the Century Foundation. It's a, it's a report that dates back, I think, 10 or 15 years. But it's a classic report basically linking housing to school growth and school growth and school needs as well. So I'm, when, we, when Russ and Joyce and myself and Sue say these things, we're not saying it because we're making it up. Good people with good knowledge about housing and schools understand they fit together. Sadly, the comp plan doesn't do that. So with that said, uh, what we did then was to do some research and we came up with the following kind of background thought that I think you all want to, I said this before, but I want to say it again because I think it's so vital to make sure you understand this tonight because this is our last chance to update the comp plan with uh, needs and amendments or whatever that satisfy our future growth policy objectives. Stoughton is in competition, at least with Oregon McFarland, for an ever decreasing number of young families. We cannot deny that fact. Our current school enrollments show that. If you looked at the uh, series put out by the uh, Courier Hub, you know that that, in fact, is true. There's an ever decreasing number of young families. Stoughton has to know its strengths and weaknesses to be on the right track to make fixes for our city. I'm a former teacher. Russ, my partner in this project, was a former principal up in Waupun, and he's also been involved in other school things. So collectively, we thought about this and said, this report, the comp plan, must link housing and school enrollment issues together if it's going to serve its long-term mission for our city. And beyond that, data analysis underpins making sure that you folks and the Planning Commission are on the right track when you dis make decisions for housing or growth that you understand those relationships by proper data analysis. And with that said, um, the comp plan is a cr critical document to get us from A to B. And like I said, right now we're at neither one because the document is so weak. There's not even one full page devoted to school analysis in the current comp plan. That's how bad it is and that's how weak it is. And it, it, that's far from what it should be. And that's why when we did Appendix A, that some of you may or may not have seen yet in your file from us, we got a listing of all kinds of maps and tables that could have been in the comp plan, at least as an amendment, if not as a direct uh, uh, document by Vanderwall or by any other group if they were helping them get that work together and done. And with that said, what we did in the end was, and I'm almost done here, we came up with three broad recommendation areas, and I, again, I'm not sure, I know you're all busy, you probably don't have time to look at all the things that fly across your computers, so I'm just going to summarize very briefly the three recommendation areas for you folks related to this discussion on housing and school enrollments and growth. Uh, and the first one involves directly the comp plan tonight. We said that you could adopt the comp plan tonight with an amendment, with a contingent amendment saying, when the city and, and or school district gets this work done, this document, this unknown document or unknown analysis will be added to the comp plan in the future. So it's kind of a contingent amendment for linking this data together. So you don't have to do it tonight, because we probably couldn't do it tonight any, anyway with the time left. But it allows us to uh, create a process by which we can get this thing linked to the comp plan at a later date. Or you could say, uh, we're, we're just going to hold off on adopting the comp plan tonight and just wait until this other mystical thing is done and do it at a later date when this document is sitting there on the shelf and can be added subsequent to it. So you can either do the comp plan tonight and have a contingent amendment added later or, as I said a moment ago, just not adopt the comp plan and just wait until this thing is done. And sec the second one gets very much to the topic of Cedarburg and what Cedarburg schools did. They hired the UW Population Laboratory to produce a very fine report on housing and school enrollments. And uh, if you haven't looked at it, you really should. There's probably 20, maybe 15 to 18 pages on housing and growth analysis for the Cedarburg school system that very much relate to the kind of decisions the city will have to make on its housing and future growth. 
So that's why we mentioned the Cedarburg report, and this was from 2015. So that's uh, number two, uh, that either you, the city, or you and the school district could combine your forces together to do a report, hire this group to do it, your, to, to have them do it for you separately. Then finally, the other thing we did in, in recommendation three, we said, you've got to keep meeting with the, with the Stoughton Area School District with, with your joint meetings. And then after we said that, we said, we said also that it'd be very wise for either the school district and or the city to create a joint task force of citizens like myself and Russ and others who care about schools, care about growth, care about housing to sit down and meet to help both the comp plan and the strategic plan get implemented properly for the future. So that was our third and final recommendation. So with that said, I'm going to stop. That's uh, quite a bit of talking here. And if I can answer questions later, I will. Uh, we've done a lot of research, and we'd be happy to share it with you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And next registered, I have Emily Barr of 2464 County A from Dunkirk. She is um, registering in support of the comprehensive plan. Um, Denise Duranzik has registered to speak. I've kept my comments to three minutes. Um, I'm Denise Durancic. I served seven and a half years on the city council, and during that time, I was on the Smart Growth Steering Committee. Alders, you are in a unique position. Over the last several years, the community's trust in city government has been seriously eroded. You have the opportunity to rebuild the community's trust by listening and, and, in and enacting suggestions made by your constituents. Your leadership in promoting the community's vision is sorely needed. You can improve the draft comp plan in many ways. First, by ensuring that the tables have correct information and meaningful percentages for decision makers. They finally made the, the changes to table six Thank you. But table eight still needs uh, some work. And the question is, why would the institutional acreage decrease in table eight compared to table six? Second, you can make recommendations for future planning process, processes that promote public input and transparency, hopefully learning by the mistakes that were made this time around. Third, you can ask that the written plan and land use map are both 25-year projections. Presently, the land use map is a 50-year projection. 25-year projections are standard practice. The present growth rates and the community's growth preferences do not support a 50-year land use map. Therefore, eliminating the additional acreage will bring the land use map closer to a 25-year projection. Rebuilding trust means not only listening but acting. The community has consistently acts, asked for a balanced growth pattern within the city, whereas the draft land use map pushes the city to the west. The feedback on the plan has been, quote, too much growth area shown on the future land use map, end quote. The addition of 843 acres to the plan has not been driven by the community's vision or its needs, but by the desires of a few people. Please don't be manipulated by the few. Remove the 843 acres from the draft land use map. And finally, Chapter 9 is the implementation part of the plan, otherwise known as an action plan. This is where your vision for the community is revealed. The community has asked you to focus on revitalizing the downtown. Inserting a downtown master plan into your action plan will be a start to fulfilling the community's vision. You may think of other additions to the action plan, 
and I'm sure they can be, there are appropriate other recommendations that reflect the community's vision. So take your time, do it right, to rebuild the community's trust. Thank you. Thank you for listening, and thank you for all of your work. Thank you. That is all that I have registered to speak in the public hearing. Are there others that wish to do so? Okay, seeing none. Um, part B talks about reading of submitted comments. We did not have any comments submitted in writing um, to us at City Hall. Um, plan Commission and Common Council questions. This is your turn to ask some questions regarding the comp plan. And again, our consultants are taking notes so that they can answer those as we go. Alder Person Engelberger. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I want to ask a couple questions of uh, Michael. Slave me. Um, if you can come up to the mic. Well, they had asked that they could answer all the questions at the end. They just would like to take a list of questions oh, and then okay. compile them into okay. one presentation. Um, well, first of all, I, I would be interested in. Uh, Putting something in the plan regarding uh, what Roger Springman is is bringing up regarding the school district and housing, and um, I don't know exactly what that'll be or what that would be, but I, I'm interested in putting something in there on that. Um, I, I guess my questions are: um, I want to hear something about uh, Denise's uh, questions about 25 and 50 50-year projections because I'm not clear that that's exactly what it says. I want to hear what the, our consultants have to say about that. And, and if, if Denise has other comments on it, I'd like to hear that too. Um, the 843-acre uh, thing that Denise brings up, I, I believe I understand that uh, part of it, and I guess I want a little clarification on that. Um, take a look at the... Uh, she also mentioned something about it, one of the schedules. I, I think it was Table 6, maybe? that she had questions about, and I want to see what that's about. And um, I guess I'd like to hear a little bit of discussion about the insert inserting downtown action plan that she talks about as well. So a little discussion amongst the commissioners and council members regarding that. Okay. Thank you, Michael. We've got all those notes. Further comments, questions, I guess, from our plan commissioners or older persons? Alder Person Reeves. Um, I just have a process question, um, sort of along what um, Alder Person Engelberg was saying, as far as if we have, after hearing some public comment and reviewing things, if we have suggestions or um, those sorts of things. I'm just curious about that process. Yep, um, according to the agenda, and this is a little different agenda than what we're used to, so I'm trying hard myself to follow, follow the rules. Um, it's Plan Commission and Council Questions. We'll close the public hearing. Our consultants will speak to the questions that they've been hearing. Agenda item number seven is discu a discussion of the amended comp plan by the plan commission and older persons. That's where that discussion part will take place. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Older person Hirsch. Okay. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to um, commend the plan commission and the consultants for a very, I think, thorough job. I mean, yes, there are some you know, additions that may need to occur, but I, you know, upon reading it, I was really impressed with what are all entailed, and a lot of it was pretty forward thinking, so I would like to thank you guys. Um, I also would like to see, as Roger pointed out, the school aspect is, is a big gaping hole in, the, in this plan, and I know based on what the um, consultant said that it it's not necessarily one of the implements that needed by law to be in here, but you know, as we are facing you know low enrollments, it would be nice to have a way to address it or some common knowledge, um, whether it's housing. But it, I mean, I suspect it's not just housing. I mean, I think there's a lot of issues that are going on with our schools that we need to you know explore and address, and I, I admire. Roger putting some thought into ways that we can possibly do it. I think um, with President Swadley's uh, initiation with, you know, starting to talk to the school board, we might be able to figure out some, you know, possible solutions once we've identified all the, you know, types of um, 
I don't want to say problems, but you know, for a better lack of a better word tonight, um, what's actually going on. I would like to see us continue that. Um, whether a Cedarburg study goes in, I wasn't, to be truthful, I wasn't really impressed with the Cedarburg study. I think it's a good starting point, but just because you build a house doesn't mean that kids are going to be there or that they're going to go to our schools. I think we got to figure out a way to make our schools desirable for not only Stoughton kids, but for other surrounding areas. Um, I'm also curious about, you know, the land use map with respect to why it's 50 years versus 25 years. I know we have a bigger land mass that needs to be put out there because you don't know what land is going to be made available in the next 25 years, and so maybe that's the issue. Um, but also, you know, with the survey that was done, I mean, 10% of our citizens only responding is a little curious and, you know, not that great for survey results. I wish we would have followed that up with phone calls or more, you know, trying to get more uh, people's opinions. But um, based on the surveys, people really want infill redevelopment issues and, and to keep the integrity of our historic nature. And I hope that going forward that we keep that in mind always instead of just growing for growth's sake. And so those are my comments. Yes, I want to see something with the schools at it, address the 25-year map, and address like the action plan for downtown. I think those are kind of key areas. Thank you. For the comments or questions, Commissioner Hanna. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I guess a question on some of these alternate studies or uh, additional studies and plans. Um, for example, the, the, the school plan and how it's not required by law that if there's a possibility, I guess my question for you guys would be the pros and cons to including them in, in the comp plan. Um, and I mean, the question to all of us here is, um, you know, do we need to use the consultants, keep paying for them to update and be a part of the comp plan, or can we just come up with our own plan and adopt a plan um, and adopt that, you know, a downtown action plan that's um, a separate document from the comp plan. Um, work with the school district um, as far as uh, an action plan for that compared to housing. Um, so if there's anything that needs to be included in the comp plan at this point, uh, I know there's lots of municipalities that have their own separate plans that they put together with planning staff, <coughs> council, planning commission, school districts, all that stuff. Um, and whether it needs to be lumped into this big document, that it might even get more attention if it's not uh, buried in a, you know, several hundred page document and maps and all this different stuff. So that would be my question is, um, you know, are we happy with the document where it's at? And then, you know, maybe at the end of this meeting, uh, come up with an agenda, a future agenda for us um, as commissioners and council members to work on these plans and bring them to committees, um, your joint meetings, things like that. Um, I can see that as a, as a different direction. So uh, one, we can keep this process moving. Um, we can kind of uh, finalize our contract terms with the consultants um, and not keep uh, building this up. Uh, as I understand, I think our budget on this is over from what we projected already. So, um, you know, we have all the knowledge of our community already. Uh, if we need to, you know, hire other consultants, as Roger has mentioned, with, you know, the UW, like Cedarburg did, or anything else, um, I think that's, that's another route that we can go. Thank you. Additional questions or comments? Alderperson Reeves. Well, I, um, it seems to me that, um, that, and I don't know if this is what you're um, getting at, but maybe um, rather than bury some of those suggestions because I had some other feedback that I think makes sense, that maybe it um, is included in the action or implementation so that, it's, so that it's there. Those are the things that we have agreed that we want to work on, um, whether it's the school analysis. Um, I had some other feedback, and I don't know, again, I don't know if this is the time or if that's at a different meeting, um, as far as adding um, some more detail. Um, I'll give you a for example. Um, I think the less ambiguous the better, for the better as far as staying on task. Um, economic Development Director, maybe we put a timeline on that. 
um, uh, in the detailed planning at a downtown master plan, put a um, timeline on that. Um, we talked about design standards. Maybe it's that becomes part of ordinances to add a detailed design standards for multifamily housing. Um, another suggestion that made sense was um, a residential development policy. And then I think I already mentioned um, economic development director and maybe put a timeline on that. So those were the, some of the suggestions, but if it becomes an action plan that we agree on, then we act on it and it's not just buried as mush and then the school analysis and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sure, Commissioner Barman. Thank you. Um, I'd like to echo the recommendation to really um, kind of flesh out a little bit more the recommendation for our downtown master plan as part of the action plan or in some other way. And I also believe there was reference in one of the earlier chapters about a historic preservation plan as well for the downtown. And I think that's equally as important. It's not the same as a downtown master plan, and especially in light of some of the things that the Planning Commission has been doing with the, in meetings of late, I think it's important to kind of have that included as part of the action plan as well. Thank you. Older person Borsma. Thank you, Your Honor. I have um, one observation and one, one then question. One, the observation is that we are essentially kind of in the middle uh, as a council and as a school board talking about issues um, not necessarily called part of a comprehensive plan, but that's really part of a process that's going on right now. Um, uh, and I would, I would, um, I think it, I think to push it too quickly might not be a great idea because we are in, we are in that process at this point. Uh, we've had one fairly large meeting, and we're having, we're having more, uh, based on uh, the work of uh, of the president of this council. And the other question is whether or not, and more specifically to a number of other people asking this nebulous question, but a question of the develop of the um, uh, of our consultants, whether or not there, um, it would be it could be or would it be advisable to have uh, an addendum to the comprehensive plan to add on those um, um, those specific items that. I think Roger primarily addressed related to school issues, because again, I think we're right in the process of talking about them right now. Um, not necessarily called a comprehensive plan, but it's still part of planning by both the city council and the, and the school board. Thank you. Additional questions or, or comments? Sure, Commissioner Hanna. Thank you. Um, <coughs> I, I think to. Uh, maybe get more specific on on some of my questions as far as the pros and cons but um, maybe from the consultants perspective uh, adding these additional studies studies that we don't have we're gonna have to create these studies in order to put them in um, and working with you guys to do it um, if you have a timeline estimate on what that would take and uh, a cost estimate on what that would take um, for you guys and if it's in a budget that you guys have talked about as a common council I mean some of these things that we're talking about is are, are pretty large plans to put together um, that you know uh, councils uh, commission consultants to do that uh, and that sounds like something that we're asking them to do uh, so I think understanding the scope of what we're adding um, makes a lot of sense before we just okay this without knowing more information about what are we asking them to do what is you know uh, study is a vague word um, you know I think a, a downtown action plan is is pretty you can find um, other uh, comparable plans to that but uh, understanding the scope of of what we want to add uh, and then from the consultants what what does that all entail on your end thank you council president Swelman. thank you your honor and uh, just to follow up on that I guess you know my question uh, for the uh, consultants would be on the implementation. I mean, it says right in the plan that the Im implementation is not the action plan. So maybe you can kind of walk us through when you start answering questions on how you see the implementation versus the action plan and whether or not that's a service your firm can even provide us. Um, I don't know if you do anything beyond this, so I'd be interested to hear if, if that's something that you would do and if it is then you know we could certainly have a 
you know, have another conversation as, as a group and find out if we want to send out a request for quote for those additional services. Thank you. Sure. Alderperson Hirsch. Hi, I'm going to switch topics <laughs> and go on to uh, page 29 with the objectives with natural resource goals and objectives. And I guess uh, one I would like to see added is uh, when maybe under objectives is when new, new development is proposed um, that you look to expand existing corridors or look to, for ways to initiate new corridors. I mean, it's, you have, you talk about corridors, but when you come to the actual goals and policies, actually goals, it's not part of the goals. You talk about preserving streamways and other ways, but you're not talking about actually looking to expand the corridors. You talk about preservation of existing, but not looking to expand or initiate new ones. Thank you. Further comments before we go back to our consultants for, um, for additional consideration? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Um, Jackie and Michael. That would be agenda item number, um, oh, I didn't close the public hearing though, I'm sorry. I'll close the public hearing and reopen for the regular course of business. And now. It's um, nice to uh, be with you uh, this evening. I, I think that a good number of the, the, uh, the questions and suggestions that were raised um, reflect the fact that this is a, a pretty good size community. It's a full service city. Things are always happening, and it would be rare in, in the course of any given year to find yourself with nothing on the docket, nothing in the works, nothing uh, being discussed conceptually where you feel you have enough breathing room to put closure on a comprehensive plan that leaves nothing in the air. Uh, so I, I understand um, concerns and, and suggestions. Um, I frankly don't think you'll, you'll get to that point where everything is put to bed and, and you can adopt feeling that there was total closure on all issues. That, that won't happen. Um, but I, in, in listening to the comments from the public, the commission, and the council, I feel that there are certain things we can get to closure on, other things we can identify for future studies, and then there's a handful of key policy decisions that have been suggested that um, either tonight or, or soon you, you need to make a decision um, or we, we won't get to closure on the, on the plan. So first, um, a lot of comments about the, the school study. So I think I've been involved in close to 300 comprehensive plans here in Wisconsin and another 100 in, in uh, the 31 other states I've worked in. And uh, detailed school analysis is not a required part of a comprehensive plan in any state. I'm not saying they're not related closely but typically the onus is on the school district to pony up for those kinds of detailed studies if the city's comprehensive plan is not the main obstacle. Um, I'm very familiar with the Cedarburg School District. We just concluded a, a comprehensive plan that included a good portion of that school district and I've worked for uh, the Cedarburg municipalities in the past, they're almost out of developable land mm -hmm. that's affordable for young families. The, the issue in the Cedarburg School District is build out, and the only option left to attract young families is to subsidize affordable uh, family-oriented housing development. And the citation to Montgomery County, that's the same thing. It's just an entire county. Montgomery County is the third least affordable county in the whole country. Um, so in terms of our comprehensive plan, we're showing hundreds and hundreds of acres for new 
residential development that is oriented to family uh, uh, accommodating single family housing, uh, family account of, uh, accommodating duplex housing, and a, a range of multifamily housing from efficiencies to three and four bedroom apartments. Um, all your, although your plan could, uh, could include a lot more detail about coordinating with the school district, the, the future land use map and the other recommendations of the plan are not in the way of the objective of the district in attracting more young families and more school students. It, I would say this issue is 75% in, in the school district's realm of action and significantly less in the cities. And, and what you can do, I think this plan does. So I, I recognize it's an issue. I don't think I would characterize it as a comprehensive plan issue. The recommendation that was made by Mr. Springman about the city and the district uh, working closely on this issue as part of a separate initiative, I would agree with. Um, I, th I think that would be a good initiative. Um, there are a good number of consultants who provide that service. We do that service. We just did that for the entire Madison uh, School District, and we recently wrapped up studies for, uh, for Cottage, uh, the Monona Grove. Uh, district kind of on the small end of the uh, the spectrum. Uh, so uh, I recognize that's an issue. It's an issue that's related to the comprehensive plan. I don't. I I think that your comprehensive plan right now is designed to be supportive of that need, uh, not opposed to that need. Um, a second uh, issue related uh, to a downtown. Uh, plan initiative. I think we could uh, uh, get a motion um, from either a plan commission or a council member to uh, include that uh, more directly in the action plan list. And I think a, a simple uh, motion would would do the trick. A downtown, well, a school district study can range from, for a district this size, from about $20,000 up, depending on how many details you're looking at. Uh, our, our Monona Grove uh, study was $20,000, but it followed a more, it was an update of a more detailed study from three years ago uh, that was at $30,000. So. Um, if it's only about enrollment, you know, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars would probably do it uh, for the school district. A downtown plan, uh, it's going to be costs are going to be related uh, to the what you define as the the downtown and how many focus areas you want. The cost of that kind of study, we do a lot of that work. All of downtown Middleton, for example, is our work. Um, uh, can range from uh, $30,000 to $230,000, uh, depending on the number of sites that are looked at in, in detail and uh, the amount of implementation that's built into the plan, for example, the creation of a TIF district or the adoption of design uh, review requirements. Um, so I think the, the downtown uh, study, it would be easy to make a motion to amend the, the plan to in, include that. I, and, and likewise, I think a motion that made a recommendation to work closely with the school district to review enrollment challenges, you, you could make uh, such a motion and we could get it uh, into the implementation uh, step. Uh, the, the issue I'm trying to knock off the easy ones uh, first here. Um, the issue of the corridors. Um, Regina, were you um, primarily orienting your comments towards the creation of recreational opportunities when you said expand the corridors, for oh. example, for trails? For trails, for open space, for preserving um, 
because you, you know, all the natural areas that you talk about are like streams, drainage, floodplains, wetlands, wildlife habitat, which could be anything. But you know, we're missing some of the like, other remnants. It might be a remnant prairie or oak savanna. You, you, it's it's so focused on around the waterways as opposed to other corridors that animals, you know, wildlife actually uses and that other, you know, humans might like to like explore and know about. So instead of just always focusing on the easy wetlands, which is undevelopable or waterways, let's look at other key habitat areas that the surrounding areas that are in our, you know, comp plan potential growth areas how can we protect other key neat areas? Or how do we reestablish what used to be there before farming came in, you know, you know, instead of just always looking to build? Well, I think that um, the zoning code addresses upland woodlands, but otherwise upland, not in drainage ways, wetlands or floodplains. Uh, upland natural resources are not emphasized in the comp plan uh, or in the zoning code. Typically, you're paying full market value for those properties, but um, we could add a statement about uh, consider opportunities for uh, preserving and restoring upland habitats. Uh, right, because if they have to set aside areas for possible parkland, let's let's really think about it, how one development might be creating a different type of corridor with the adjacent you know, park system and the other development. Well, know? I think that's a wonderful recommendation. And I think, again, in this instance, a motion to that effect um, would result in a, an efficient way to update the plan immediately. Um, there were uh, recommendations to potentially consider an economic development uh, director or to assign specific timelines for accomplishing some of the other recommendations in the plan. My, my uh, advice being ignorant of, of local politics is I think that the comprehensive plan is one of many powers that the uh, plan commission and council have. One is the power of the purse. <coughs> Even if we assigned a timeline, um, there's no guarantee that those kinds of initiatives can be funded. Um, and I think for that reason, comprehensive plans typically don't include timelines unless there's an absolute consensus to move forward uh, quickly and, and get things underway. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure how those initiatives play out amongst uh, uh, the larger group here, but it's rare to have uh, timelines for those kinds of initiatives where timelines do get um, assigned to those initiatives if you have a five year capital improvement uh, plan or during the course of your. Uh, annual budgeting, um, you know, making uh, recommendations to fund those initiatives. Uh, detailed design standards and, and uh, detailed historic preservation plans, those are relatively expensive items. Um, I would uh, provide a ballpark cost of about $25,000 a piece for those. They, they both take about a year um, on average. Should it be part of this process, uh, you can identify them uh, through capital uh, budgeting. Um, and again, a motion to include recommendations for those in the comp plan uh, could be made. All right. Uh, so now I'm going to move on to the, uh, the kind of the pure policy items. The first of, of which is should the future land use map show as much land as currently shown? We, we estimated that it's about a 50 year plan. Um, the statutes um, hint at the desirability of a 20 year 
plan. There's no requirement, no formula given in statutes or administrative law or case law. It's up to each municipality to decide what to do. I would say that uh, the majority of plans that I've either worked on or have reviewed um, do not adhere to a strict uh, 10, 20, 25 year timeline. They are more based on we envision all of the land we're showing for potential development to be potentially developable in the foreseeable future, which may be a lifetime. Um, rather than being strictly guided by projections and development mathematics. Um, we uh, talked about this issue at length when we did the comprehensive plan a, a dozen years ago. And I would characterize the approach of, of uh, that plan and, and the current map as um, we should uh, show city growth wherever we feel city growth is logical. And uh, that is based in large part about where we can make cost-effective <coughs> utility extensions over the long run. Other communities nearby that have used a similar approach would include Oregon, uh, Cottage Grove, Sun Prairie, Edgerton, uh, Evansville, Mount Horeb, <coughs> Jefferson, Fort Atkinson, Johnson Creek, Watertown, Baraboo. You know, the, the approach the city has taken is um, a, a typical approach, not the only way it can be done. But a, but a typical approach. The addition of the land on the west side of the city um, uh, came out of discussions with your city staff about those issues, about directions of growth and, and uh, where could the city reach cost effectively with the utility network. And uh, that's all there is to it. It was uh, not a complicated uh, discussion. It was the addition I felt was consistent with the philosophy behind the map in the existing comprehensive plan. Now whether or not that's an appropriate approach or this specific, these specific additions on the west side are the right thing to do, that is a, a pure policy decision and um, if there isn't a con consensus, the plan needs to, to make a recommendation. It's you know either on or off for the most part. It's either shown in that light green color, which indicates a very, very limited development oriented to agriculture, um, or it's, it's in the other colors, which indicate the potential for uh, short or long-term uh, development, depending on the color that's shown. Um, th there are a few, couple of other issues that were raised that I wanted to uh, address that were um, similar uh, to that, um, but maybe we should talk about about that one in in particular. As long as I'm up here, are there um, questions or suggestions that? you have related to that issue of, of adding that band of development uh, west of the, the city. Sure. Alderperson Engelberger. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> well, I mean, my, uh, my opinion on that is I don't have a problem with adding the land that we've added into the plan. Um, we have, uh, we've been, uh, starting to build and plan for development on hundreds of acres now that we hadn't planned on just even a couple years ago. So, um, you know, and then the other thing is we're, um, we have a lot of areas, a lot of directions that we can't go because we've got either township or 
um, township development that's already taken place. We've got a lot of uh, wetland areas that we can't develop that's included in, the, in our numbers. Um, and there's just some directions that we can't go. So myself, I'm happy with, uh, with the amount of land that we've got in our, our plan. I, I think a 20-year you know, vision is nice, but I think a 50-year vision is, uh, is more um, prudent for a city to be looking at than just the short term. So. Thank you. Other thoughts? Commissioner Hanna. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I'd agree with uh, all the person Engelberger. Uh, I honestly don't see any harm in what we've done. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort into planning for it, planning for the future. Um, you know, there's a percentage of the small percentage of people that responded to the survey that have said they don't like the growth pattern, but this doesn't necessarily say that this is what the city's going to do in 50 years. So, um, <clears throat> I. I think it's definitely suitable. Uh, why not? Why not plan for, you know, something that could happen uh, and be ready for it, um, and just to eliminate all the work that we've paid you guys for and that we've put into it. Um, it just doesn't make logical sense to me. Thank you. For that thoughts, 25 years versus the 50-year plan as presented. We're all still thinking. We had a couple of, of opinions on the 50-year plan. Sounds like a, a good plan. Um, anyone else that wanted to weigh in on that at this time? Okay, Commissioner Hirsch. Uh -oh. Commissioner Hirsch. How about Alderperson Hirsch? <laughs> <laughs> Where you get, what, was that a promotion? Or I don't know what that was. <laughs> it just came out that way. <laughs> um, I guess I'm okay with the 50-year plan. It would be nice to see, you know, what is projected, you know, maybe have it, a 50-year plan, but maybe can you highlight what you suspect would be within the 25 years? So it, it does both. You know, what areas would you like to see within 25 be one color and then 50 it kind of goes out, you know, to expands a little bit different. I think that might visually satisfy, at least, you know, me and some other people because you can see what you're expecting to develop first and then, you know, and I know it all depends on what land is becomes available and where, but, you know, you can draw a circle around. You're not going to start way off if it's not linked already. You're not going to do the furthest western portion first. You're going to try to do something that's a little bit closer to existing sewer and utilities. And so maybe you know, draw, you know, a circle around what would be the first areas ideally that would be developed within 25 years and then, because I know I, when I was at one of the planning commissions, you were, meetings, you were talking about that you're not going to develop this land first because that'd be silly, it'd be an island. And so that's what I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if that could work. Well, um, most of the time um, our attempt to make this a science is on uh, this map that Rodney put up the most uh, so the general rule of thumb would be land that can be immediately reached by public water and sewer will develop first and then there's a, and this map depicts that and then there are exceptions and these exceptions occur often um, land that is really logical is not for sale um, the the landowners are committed to farming or otherwise committed to not development for whatever personal reasons and those personal reasons trump uh it, i shouldn't say that take precedence over uh proximity to available utilities <laughs> uh, land that is acquired 
uh, particularly if it's a large piece of land um, that is over a ridge, like has happened on the um, extreme west side of the city now. If a large enough piece comes in, it's cost effective to put a lift station. Uh, if, if that piece comes in, it's because there's a willing seller. And uh, if a developer is willing to put money behind their proposal to extend infrastructure and, and uh, make development happen, even if it's not uh, uphill from the end of existing lines, that stuff tends to come online. So if, if you were to ask me to, to uh, do the best job I could on such a map, that would be the map right there. We did the best job we could, and we, we put a lot of time uh, into it. And you, you look at that map, and you see we've already encountered the exceptions that I'm talking about. The second approach would be to simply draw a quarter mile band around the end of existing utilities. We know that um, land in that band would be, would, would be first and it would be unlikely under current market conditions for leapfrog development beyond that band. Um, and what I, I think you can look at the existing land use map in the, in the comprehensive plan. You can see the size of those quarter quarter sections. Mm -hmm. It's great living in the drift in the, uh, the glaciated part of the state where we have those quarter sections. And that's your quarter mile band. Um, so I understand um, the desire. I think the comp plan provides okay. that information. Thank you. Older person Borsma. Thank you. Um, I, had, I had a question, too, uh, just on implementation, very brief. And that is that I would assume that some cities uh, get their comprehensive plan, put them together, um, have, it, have it sitting someplace, and then don't do much with it. Um, but, uh, but how to implement, how to implement is another thing that I have a question about, and that is whether or not you have any suggestions for us in terms of strategy for development and actually improving our development or getting it going. Um, uh, now we've had it, we've had, we've had some already, but I, I'm just talking about how you, how you, if you could just quickly address the issue of implementation. Well, I, th I think um, the key challenge facing the upper Midwest, with few exceptions, Madison and adjacent, directly adjacent communities, Rochester, Twin Cities, Indianapolis, Columbus, Des Moines. Uh, there's, uh, there are, uh, there's an ample supply of developers for those communities, and, and Chicago, I forgot that. Elsewhere in the upper Midwest, there is a dearth of developers. Few survived the recession, particularly in smaller communities. There are home builders. There are franchisees. There are numerous people that are part of the development process, but developers, meaning folks who acquire property, uh, plat land, and put in public improvements, are in short supply. And it can be a matter of a few miles. Um, we know from Wanakee, around the west side of the lake, all the way to Highway 14, there's like seven people who own all of the developable land. There isn't a shortage of developers in that area. That land is in very high demand. But if we go to the east, and if we go to the east side of the county, only in Sun Prairie is there really an adequate supply of developers. Um, and, and I say adequate in terms of meeting potential market demand. Um, so the, what we're facing here is being faced in Watertown and in Jefferson. It's being faced in Milton. It's being faced in Delavan. It's being faced in Baraboo. Um, we, we have market potential. We have the demand. But the de real developers right now are in very short supply. So it's, it's uh, and, and, and Dane County is better off than any other county in the state in terms of having active developers. The only comparable county is Waukesha County right now. 
one follow-up question. So, so would it be behoove um, if you if you see that something is coming up pretty quickly that you make make plans to extend like utilities out into those areas where you really you really think it's going to happen and do it before like developments happen or well um, when I first uh, came to Wisconsin to start planning in the mid 80s there were still a few villages primarily um, far out Lafayette County Grant County Iowa County Judo County uh, Dodge County there were still a few villages that were the developer they would buy land they would put in the streets uh, all the cost they were they were the bank and sometimes it was a bad load that you know the builders did it show up in many cases they did but that practice to my knowledge went away about 1990 throughout the state and and I, I, I think a lot of villages got burned um, they it was kind of the equivalent of a bank giving a bad loan to a to a developer and I think that increasingly that was not seen as an appropriate role for a municipality um, but uh, you know, in the in the absence of that, there are some tools that can be used. But you know, there are questions of public policy about to what extent you want to subsidize uh, development. So I think that having a plan that um, does plan for active infill and redevelopment, where your your um, public policies can be big levers and then having a future land use map that shows adequate land for edge development that's the right strategy for for a comprehensive plan to take i, I realize it's a struggle here you're not alone in, in, in that struggle right now there's no magic bullet for that. thank you do we have commissioner hannah yeah uh to continue on that um mike do you see um you know the position of an economic development director something that we don't you know currently really have uh being a good asset um to have as far as uh you know driving development or um encouraging growth in certain areas pushing this plan a little bit um more than what maybe we have in the past um, so with your interaction with other municipalities how do you see that role um, affecting the growth? So I'm going to answer based on my knowledge of other municipalities. Um, you know, every community is a little different. So, um, I would say that in communities of less than about 20,000, um, particularly where development, the pace of development is pretty modest, um, I, I think that a good number of, of uh, cities have experimented with creating that position and um, it was it, it's been a relatively short-term experiment in in most instances and there was a recognition that the main role of that person um, was either Uh, finding places to spend public subsidy money, you know, making connections, not a, not a worthless role, but a, a role that other city staff could um, handle. Um, or promotion, uh, community promotion, you know, similar to what chambers of commerce um, also, uh, often do. So in, in my exper uh, experience, in most instances that has been a short-term experiment there are exceptions I think it's a matter of um, those exceptions have been where a, a, a unique individual has been found where it was just the perfect match and in some instances I would say that it was going to happen anyway and that person just happened to be in the right place at the right time but in some instances an individual really made a difference those people who make a difference often start looking for um, um, greener pastures too after after several years they get some uh, accolades and and uh, 
um, success stories that they can tell. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of churning. You know, I would say three years is a pretty typical tenure for that particular kind of position for various, whether you're successful or not successful. So you would say, um, you know, work within existing city staff, but also maybe further engagement with um, Chamber of Commerce? Yeah, it's, yes, I, I would say that a, a model to potentially look at right now is what Mount Horeb is doing, um, where it's a combination of um, senior city uh, village staff and a, um, a volunteer economic development um, board uh, and uh, partial funding, partial uh, municipal funding of a part-time uh, position. That's a way to tiptoe into something, and you know, as far as the municipality, and see what your partner organizations maybe are willing to do in terms of being a partner and the role that they could potentially play. And also, I think it provides an opportunity to see, to really test the resources and capabilities you already have on staff. Okay. I guess I'll just make one general comment. I think, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of discussion on collaboration uh, amongst us here with school district and council. Um, I would say that, you know, I think it would be very beneficial to have more interaction with the with the chamber, as, as Mike has said. Where I think there is there seems to be, from I guess just from a general per, uh, personal standpoint, uh, kind of a, a disconnect um, with the chamber. And I, I I think we could collaborate a lot more on uh, development, um, you know, moving forward. Um, so that's just a general comment. Thanks, Mike. I don't know if you've done this, but uh, I think a very common step. Uh, initial step is uh, either the city or the chamber or a volunteer economic development organization surveying business needs and, and asking are there things the city has done that's really helped you out? Are there things we're doing that are getting in the way? Are there opportunities that you recognize that we could help you um, accomplish? Um, you probably uh, done some of that uh, in the past. As has our chamber, and I'm looking at Laura yeah. in, the, in, the, in our audience tonight. So you could check that one off uh, if, if it's been done recently. Okay. So I do, I do think that some suggestions have been made by the public, uh, commissioners and, and council members. Uh, the suggestion to um, add a downtown action plan in the implementation step, the suggestion coming from the public and, and others around the table to uh, closely work with the school district to address enrollment uh, challenges, um, the suggestion to uh, consider the opportunity to add, uh, provide for habitat and habitat restoration when acquiring public property, for example, for parks and, and trails. I think those three suggestions could be readily um, added just by means of a motion uh, tonight. All right, and if further information that you'd like to share with us, Michael? Otherwise, we'll move into just that on our agenda, which is the discussion and proposed amended comprehensive plan, um, which would include those types of motions from land commissioners or alder persons. <coughs> alder person Hirsch. Well, of course, I'm going to make the motion to update the plan to include <coughs> and underneath the natural resource goals, objectives, and policies to include to expand and or create corridors with the existing or restoration of upland habitats such as prairies, oak savannas, woodlands, etc. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Motion by Hirsch, a second by Engelberger. So comments to, or oh, I'm sorry. Just mm -hmm. a quick point of order. So mm -hmm. your motion is to 
include that into the plan? Yeah, there is a section on page 29, the Natural Resource Goals sure. and Objectives, that has all these objectives. But in previous pages, they talk about the importance of corridors. Okay. But when it got to the objectives part of it, that kind of got left off. It all deals with wetlands and streams, and it, it kind of leaves off other habitat types. Okay. And so if we have an opportunity for a new development to either restore an, um, a previous prairie or oak savanna type thing from, you know, that was ruined during farming, we should look at that and how it could link to existing other um, developments in the adjacent area so we can create a nice bigger parkland corridor. Sure. So just from an efficiency standpoint, I guess and we can certainly take up that motion because it's on the table. Um, I would suggest that maybe what we do is get a motion on the table and then just do a series of amendments. Otherwise, we're starting all over after every one. It's just a suggestion. And I also have just a kind of a procedural question about whether <clears throat> on the agenda, we have two bodies here tonight, we have Plan Commission and the City Council. <coughs> Plan Commission is going to make a recommendation and then the City Council, after the Plan Commission makes its recommendation, will make its own decision. Um, and so, at least the way the agenda is structured and given that we have two bodies, maybe we should have the Plan Commission first make its motion and go through its process and amendments that it wants to make and then follow that up with the city council process. Otherwise, I'm not sure how we go back and forth between the two bodies. I was, she asked, the mayor said, yep. anybody have a motion? <laughs> yep. I did. Nobody I raised did their hand. I raised well, my hand. And, I, and I'm reading through our agenda. Again, it's, it's a little different than what we're used to, but it talks about discussion and proposed amended comprehensive plan. And we're kind of doing that, which discussion usually includes motions, right? And then Agenda 8 talks about Plan Commission consideration of an action on resolution recommending the amended comprehensive plan. And the Plan Commission will make that recommendation to the County Council. Yeah, and so I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to figure out here is we're having a discussion, I think, about whether the draft plan that's been presented and that was prepared for the public hearing, one of the things that both the Plan Commission and the Common Council will need to do as part of their decision-making process is whether to make certain changes to that plan before they before they approve it. And so um, I guess you could, before you go to, uh, you'll, you'll have to decide. I think the agenda would allow either, e either approach. You can either go one at a time, take turns, or if you want to work all together on making changes to the draft plan and then go to the plan commission and the council. Or maybe Mike has a better idea. <laughs> but, but um Matt raises an issue. Here's my recommendation that a member of the council or the plan commission can suggest a motion. If someone from the plan commission likes that idea, they can say, I make a motion to that effect, and the plan commission can vote. And then the council could, could vote, and then you move on to the next uh, issue. Would, would that? That works for me. We just have to remember we have two separate bodies, so if Alder Person Hirsch's motion is on the table and being discussed. If there's a vote on that, I think that should be city council voting on that. As is customary, though, to, to what, uh, what I heard um, Council President Swadley said, is that we typically make a motion to approve the count plan and then amend as we go. I think um, Commissioner, as well as Alderperson Truel, had a comment to make. Thank you, actually. I was prepared to make that motion. I, I would recommend that the, that the Plan Commission move forward and recommend to the council the adoption of what I believe the technically is it is it actually ordinance six? Yes. So I so I would recommend that the that the plan commission uh, recommend to the council the adoption of ordinance six seventeen an ordinance to adopt the amended comprehensive plan uh, for the city of Stoughton. Second. No, we actually have a separate plan commission resolution prepared for this meeting. Okay. I, I, I led that. you wrong. Resolution fifteen of two thousand and seventeen is your Great. plan commission. Okay. So let it be. Let, uh, okay. I, I will accept that as friendly. Um, and then in, including in that, that motion would then also be the uh, addition that Jackie made, her memo dated 619 that addresses those 33 lots. Um, I believe we wanted to make that as a part of the motion as well. Second. Okay, so there's a motion by Commissioner Truel, second by Commissioner Engelberger. Um, comments? 
point or the Regina had a we motion do. on the table and, and so then we I was deal told with that. I understand but I was told that I was kind of doing it wrong so we took a big step backwards um, so now I have to you'll have to say that over again can you remember it all I have it written down but right. it's like do we have actually have a plan of action of what actually is going on right now yeah, as I understand the agenda the plan of action and I should have interjected earlier I'm sorry um, I think the proper course of action is for the, for the plan commission to address the plan commission resolution, to have its discussion, to make its decision and recommendation. Then we move to council, and that would be all the person Hirsch. If your issues haven't already been addressed when it comes to to the council, then that would be your opportunity. Pardon me. <coughs> Do I have to withdraw my motion until later? I think so. Well, that would be the uh, clearest way. Because you, yes. Uh, yes. That would be my. Let's clean it up. That would that would make things easier. Yeah. Otherwise, Greg's head's gonna fall off. <laughs> so I, I withdraw my motion. <laughs> okay. And so, guys? and I withdraw my second. Okay. And if I could follow up on Scott's motion, which I think was to adopt the plan recommended to the council, along with the uh, letter that. That was it. That was talked about. Was that the one with your the June nineteenth uh, memo? June nineteenth memo. Two-page memo or three-page? Yeah. So, and I would further amend if I could. Um, Regina's amendment. You, want me you to read, read that? It? Yes. I want to do that as a separate motion, though. Let's. No, I'd like well, to we... do it all in one so we can get it done. All right. <laughs> Well, actually, we He's have making an additional amendment to the main main motion, so it's very motion, different. Which we have a main motion. That. This is an amendment. So yeah. you need a second for that, as so well as some other things that I'd like to say. Let's, a, let's make sure that Lana gets it, though. We're kind of yeah. motioning on top of the ourselves. Let's take a yeah. moment. Yeah. Mike's on the planning commission. You guys are both just, on the planning just, commission. Right. So, I don't know why. I mean, Alderperson Trull's motion is to adopt the resolution. It's not Alderperson yeah. Trull, it's Commissioner Trull for the motion. He's both. The plan conserves his both. With the changes that were reflected in the June 19th memo. Yeah, June 19th. That's the main motion. Yeah. That was a second. Yep, Engelberger. We're just going to leave off titles. We're just going to call you Trull and Engelberger. And then I would like to amend that if I could. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would like to amend that as reflected in what Regina said earlier with her motion to include that language as well as a couple other things here. So we're going to need some help with that we'll language them, though. One at a time. So, yeah. Alderperson Hirsch, if you could um, repeat what your motion was just to help right. be adopting that into Alderperson Hirsch. The motion Engelberg. was for the natural resource goals, objectives, and policies. But you're going to have to say it slower, I don't think. Well, it's just that section. But Lana's typing, so I know. we're going to... This is a section. <laughs> yep. Um, to include opportunities uh, to expand and or create corridors with existing or restoration of... It, ready? Okay. Upland habitats... such as prairies, oak savannas, woodlands, etc. I guess at the beginning is for any new development, look for those opportunities. I want to be specific. At the beginning, I would say for any propose a new development and then you know go into that okay so this is a, an amend an amendment by Engelberger was there a second to that amendment and we're looking for um, plan commissioners at this point well, I think Elder I wanted to add something part to it. One. He's got yeah. more. Oh, he's got more to his yeah. amendment. Yeah. All right. Well, on page one of the document, um, they've got listed Alder Jensen as a as a plan commission member, which he was, but he's no longer. Sure. And Alder Bartlett is on the plan commission now, so that should be changed. Page one. And that is. Um, 
And I, I did want to add something regarding the uh, school issue that was talked about earlier, but I don't know how to how to put that in a form of a motion or uh, amendment. So I may just wait until after the second the second reading. <coughs> or, or a next amendment. Unless somebody can figure it out at this meeting. So, Lana, could you read the proposed amendment? <laughs> no, she says. Nope. <laughs> we'll do your best. Well, I'm, I'm getting, I got a little... Do you want me to come up the there with it? With the different, yeah, with no. the different habitats. If I could just have your actual language, that would be good. Thank you. Cool. We can do that. We can do that. No worries. <laughs> Oops. Don't you Sorry. And don't... Yeah. Just don't just don't get stuck in there. So... While they're doing that, mm -hmm. Mike, a question for you or for, for the other plan commission members. Um, if we're trying to, you know, to your point about wanting to make a couple of other amendments per some of the discussions about, you know, school enrollment, um, downtown action, um, we can either do that, I mean, we could conceivably do it at, at, at plan in, under either uh, the intergovernmental cooperation. We could add something there. We could add something under economic development. I mean. You know, whether we yeah. do it tonight, I think you might be right about it. It might be better to do it at, at the when it comes to Between back meetings. to council. We can actually see what we're doing. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Because I don't think we'll come up with something tonight. I don't know, but the one I'm looking at has Matt Barman, or I'm sorry, Matt Barman was as our council representative. It doesn't have Greg Johnson on it. It's a joke that was coming over to uh, Michael, when I'm looking at the acknowledgments at the beginning of the comprehensive plan, I see Matt Bartlett as our council representative, not Alder Person oh, Jensen. Yeah. So I'm not sure okay. that. Maybe I opened the wrong document. The red line version had me red I mean, out. I, I opened it from the plan <coughs> the red page. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I'm opening the one that's Maybe right I've underneath. I've got the wrong one in front of me. I don't know. Yeah. <coughs> so, would you? How would you like to proceed with your motion on that change? Well, I mean, if it's already, I think it's, it's there. It's already changed. It's a mute point. Okay. I didn't want to change your motion. Draft version. The, dra right. the so draft version did have it correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's not the one I opened. <laughs> okay. Other person true. Okay. So with that in mind, Mike, are we better off? Are you comfortable? Is the plan commission comfortable with the amendment that that Lana is going to read back to us here? Do we want to take that up tonight, or do we want to take that up when council takes this whole thing up in two weeks? I think plan commission should make their amendment this evening. And okay. Because this is what Plan Commission is going to recommend to Council, and right. if you truly want to do that, why not? Okay. Why not do that now? So I have, as a main motion, there's a motion by um, Truel, second by Ingleberger, to approve or to recommend approval of Resolution 15, 2017, to um, have Council adopt the amended comprehensive plan, to but also to include the memo dated 619 of 2017. Was I close on that one, Alderperson Truel? Yes, ma'am. There is a, an amendment by Ingleberger. Um, and was there a second on that amendment? Second. Was second by Bartlett. Thank you. Two, and that's where um, Lana's going to read for us. Um, amendment states that the natural resources, goals, and policy section of the comprehensive plan is to include that any proposed new development um, is to include opportunities to expand or create corridors with existing or restoration of upland habitats such as prairies, oak savannas, woodlands, and etc. Is that you're comfortable? Okay. All right. mm -hmm. So we'll vote first on the amendment, and again, this is a plan commission 
discussion and then vote. Commissioner um, Kirchman. My, my question is, does that go under Section F then, or where is this going with that language that Lana read? Does that go under Section F on page 29, or where is that language going? I, I had it under E, under objectives. <clears throat> under the objective, under objectives or policies? Yeah, it says goal, protect the natural features, Stoughton's planning, then objectives. Because it's not a policy yet, so it would have to be a, an objective, right? Okay. Thank you. Sure. Commissioner Barman. I just want a clarification on the, <clears throat> on the wording. It sounded like it was requirement that all development do that, and I think it was that it, it, whenever possible. And I just can I, can I hear the wording one more time? Because it sounded like they must do that, and I, I think that might have that been a little be stronger than what was yeah. intended. That's why I wouldn't that what it says? Right, you just read it one more time. Yeah. Um, that the natural resources goals and policy section um, of the comprehensive plan is to include that any proposed new development um, is to include opportunities to expand or create corridors with existing or restoration of upland habitat such as prairies, oak savannas, woodlands, and et cetera. I think it was supposed to be a look for opportunities. Yeah, it's, yeah it sounds a little bit stronger than I think what was intended. Yeah. Rec recommend. Yeah. yeah. And you might want to specify that it is part of the objectives because that didn't come out in what you just read either. Okay. Yep. It, is, it is recommended that, is that they look for opportunities. Yeah. That they look that for it, it is recommended that mm -hmm. and then okay. Because that is an objective. It's an objective yep. of the city to accomplish that. And I, I don't, can't remember if you also were tying it into the recreation mm -hmm. network as well. Because I don't know if it's... Yeah, I mean, it, it goes back to where they explain all about corridors and the importance of that. Gotcha. So it was just making sure that that was captured into the goals. Good. Get rid of... It is recommended. It's dead safe. <laughs> <laughs> Consider <opportunity>. <clears throat> to Consider opportunities. So Will you read that back before we vote? Yeah. Can you read it one more time, please? Sure. Um, so that it would say that the natural resources goals and policy section is to include um, an objective. It's under, under the as, as an objective. Yes. Yeah. Um, e. Why don't you add that now? I'll call yeah, it item E. To include uh, yeah, objective as an item objective. E. recommended that mm -hmm. uh, that any proposed new development consider opportunities to expand or create corridors with existing or restoration of upland habitat such as prairies oak savannas woodlands or except and etc so yeah all right so that's our amended motion by Commissioner Ingleberger second by Commissioner Bartlett so this is a plan commission vote at this point so all those plan commissioners in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. That motion carries. Takes us back to the main motion by um, Commissioner Truel, second by Engelberger, to adopt resolution 15, 2017, and also include the memo, date, memo dated 6 19 of 17. As amended. As amended, yep. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the main motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you? I got a question okay. on the motion. <laughs> now I'm getting whiplash. Yeah. Um, Engelberg. Yeah, I just have a question for the consultant. Um, we, we talked a little bit about uh, table six, and I, I don't know, was that cleared up? I, I don't. Yeah. I don't know what was cleared up on that. Actually, actually, actually table, eight. Table, eight. Table, eight. table eight was it? It was a question on one of those tables by Denise. Yeah, right? she had a I question to... about table six and table eight. Okay. And so we cleared up the issues with table six. Um, we could address the same issues with table eight, just um, rebalancing the the categories to have development oriented ca categories in their own subtotal. Um, we didn't do that for table eight, but we could if, if the plan commission and council would like us to. Well, I guess I what I understood was that, that the table was wrong, but that wasn't the case. It's just 
it's the table is based off of our GIS database, so I'm confident in its okay. accuracy. So what what page is Table Eight on? Oh, I, just a second. I wrote that down. Um, that's on page 75. So that's a um, captures our future land use categories by acres. What page is it? 75. Page 75. Rodney, are you able to pull that up? Yeah, I'm um, just about the there. Thank you. It's not on page 75. <coughs> 75 of the of the the Clean. plan, mm -hmm. the yeah. plan, not page 75. I must have 70. the wrong one open here because. <coughs> well, see in the bottom right hand corner it says yeah. 75, I'm but if you look on the electronic. My page 75 doesn't have that table on it, dear. If Michael, if you look so. at where the because council it's actually packets are it's on our council. The electronic page, page number is I different. I at the uh, planning commission. Yeah, no, don't go there. 83 of the electronic mm -hmm. document. Mm -hmm. Marked up one is different. So what's what's changed there, or what should be changed? So as you can see, um, in this table we have um, surface water and um, the first row ag rural vacant. I'm um, included. Um, Sorry. Oh, here we. Go. No, that's okay. that's actually very helpful. Thanks. <laughs> so you can see, kind of like two thirds of the way down the table, we've got a development subtotal line. Um, but we don't break down the percentages. Um, let's see how to explain this. Um, Move the total up. Yeah, so the percentages under. are based on the grand total and not the development subtotal. So we what could would adjust you put this. under that total then? We could adjust Right away in surface water? I'm sorry? What would you put underneath the, t the total if you changed it? Um, I think what we'd do is we would change the percentages based on the development subtotal instead of so the grand total so at the bottom of the table. You're actually not adding, you're, you'd be taking away. Are, are you, Jackie, aren't you actually talking about taking away the, 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 the properties here that are not developable and rebalancing the list? Um, yeah, that's another way to say that. Mm -hmm. See, just so I got it, you're taking these three categories and putting them below this and then reconfiguring the numbers or no? No, um, the they're currently below that. Um, so that seven seven thousand number includes the three rows above it, um, but the percentages are based off of the grand total of the seven thousand nine hundred thirty six. And the we could redo the percentages to just be based off of the development subtotal of six thousand four hundred fifty two. Commissioner Hanna. Yeah. For, so for clarification, for example, Mike, <coughs> right now. The four percent of ag rural vacant land is three forty out of seven thousand nine thirty six. I believe so. And instead, they would update the percentage of three forty out of six thousand four fifty two, which would give you basically five percent. Five percent. That's what so I'm trying to say. Thank you. Right now, it's all the percentages are based on seven thousand nine thirty six. So all the numbers, all the percentage numbers above 6,452 would be adjusted based on that number, not on the 7,936. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's a change that we could make if you would like us to. I would, I would uh, ask for that amendment. Are you making that as, yep. a, as a motion? Second. Some help with that, Lana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it'd be a mo the motion is to amend Table Eight to base the percentages associated with developable areas on the subtotal of the developable land area. That's right. Like that. There was a second by Troll. Okay, any further <coughs> co comments or discussion on Table 8? <coughs> Otherwise, again, for our plan commissioners, we have a, a motion, an amendment to the original motion, um, amendment made by um, Ingelberger, second by Troll, to amend Table 8. Commissioner Hanna. Thanks. So just for clarification, Jackie, how you would do that, would you take... Um, 
how would the percentages change uh, on those three items below so development I think subtotal? Yeah, those would all be zeros. zeros. Uh, the percentages would be. These would be zeros. Yep. yep. And that would make it consistent with table six. Correct. Yep. All right. For the questions on table eight, Commissioner Kirchma. Oh, nope. Good. All right. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. That motion carries. Takes us back to our main motion on the floor of recommending resolution 15 to the Common Council. Any further amendments that you'd like to make at this time? Seeing none, all those in favor of recommending resolution 15, 2017, aye. 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 Opposed, no. That motion carries. Thank you. Motion of adjournment. Adjournment of the Planning Commission. There's a motion. Motion. Now I can't say it. A motion <laughs> by Truel, second by Ingleberger. All those in favor of adjourning the Plan Commission, aye. 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 Opposed, no. That motion carries. <clears throat> we have a five-minute recess. Well, we have to. Our, can we just go through two more things? Do you think that'll be long or not? Their agenda item ten and eleven. Um, for the Common Council. Um, ordinance 6 of 2017, then, is um, the ordinance to adopt the amended comprehensive plan for the City of Stoughton as a first reading. If there are any co comments or discussion on that at this time, sure. otherwise that will absolutely go on to the Council agenda. Um, and then we can. Can I just ask for clarification? So when, <clears throat> if, if we move past the first reading tonight, when the when this matter comes back to the council for a second reading and an ordinance, will the ordin will the plan that's attached be the plan as amended by the plan commission tonight? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So I guess the question would be if if council wants to make further amendments this evening. Well, it's a first reading, so that would come under that. We can. Uh, my my only concern is does that give us a proper amount of time for notification? First reading, second reading. The second reading will be at a subsequent meeting. A, yeah, a couple weeks meeting. from now. Yeah. You're okay with that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Just a procedural thing. Yeah. Okay. One other procedural sure. thing. I would mm -hmm. I would have Scott read the read it so it's read for the first time. Certainly. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Plan Commission brings forth Ordinance 6-2017, uh, an ordinance to adopt the amended comprehensive plan of the City of Stoughton. It's the first reading. We'll take it up in two weeks. All right, thank you. That leaves one item on our joint meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Ingleberger, second by Jensen. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. That motion carries. Let's take a 10-minute break, and we'll be back at 8.